Hello, I'm Doug, stand-up physicist. And today I'm going to describe a 30-second, maybe 40-second interaction I had pitching my idea for a unified standard model to Stephen Wolfram, the guy who was so smart he came up with uh, Mathematica and won one of those genius awards, you know, PhD by age of 22 or something like that. I'm not sure exactly. Um, but a just uh, one of the smarter guys on the surface of the earth right now. <laughs> um, the short story is he didn't buy it, but I thought I'd go into it, uh, this very uh, brief interaction about what, the, what I learned from it. So I was at Boston Bar Camp, uh, a very fun event that's um, in its fifth year running and uh, hopefully they'll have another one next year. And it's a collection of, of local nerds, and actually people do travel from Canada and out of state uh, just to gather together about things they're curious about, things they find fun, like um, there was a guy uh, writing a book called Cooking for Nerds that was uh, <laughs> I, of course, had to go to since I'm a nerd and into cooking. Uh, and I really want to get one of those water bath thingies, but uh, I don't know if that's in the cards for this year lot of fun, but it's very kind of organic, uh, you know, just local, you know, people. And they've got this board that has um, ideas about dis uh, things to talk about. And of course, I went up uh, and said, I'm going to talk about for an entire hour about this very t-shirt. And I was getting ready for my own session and I gave myself a half an hour where I didn't actually listen to anybody's talk but kind of tried to get my mind you know at peace about what all the things I was going to try and do in that period of time and I look over at the board to see well what 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 do I have for dessert after after the main course is done and I noticed there was something about Wolfram Alpha which is a thoroughly amazing uh, web site, you know, what's, what its future holds. It, it's the kind of site where you, and the, it's the only site where you can type something like, tell me the gross national product for the United States uh, from 1990 to uh, 2000 and divide it by uh, the number of people, you know, so the per, per capita kind of GDP. Um, and it knows how to actually give you a collection of numbers back. It's, it's really pretty impressive. And the presenter was Stephen Wolfram. And I said, well, no, that guy's like at the international level, okay? Um, what's he doing here at this little local um, Boston bar camp? And so I thought about it for a moment and I said, well, maybe what they've done is that they've just got like a, a video thing of him and they're just going to play it. And then I kind of looked around. I mean, it wasn't like a huge space and it's like, yeah, but that is Stephen Wolfram right over there. <laughs> this is like, you know, I'm looking at my watch and I think, I, I, I'm on in 15 minutes, you know, but uh, should I pitch the man? It's like, I got to go try and do it. So I walk right up to him and he was very polite. And I said, I've got a unified standard model theory right on this very t-shirt. And he was like, well, that's something. And I said, and it's based on using quaternions and hyper complex numbers. And he thought about it for a moment. These, these cats are fast. And he said, yeah, there's a lot of work being done with octonians, which is true. It's just not at all relevant to what I'm doing, okay? So I came back at him and said, well, I'm not using Actonians. I'm using hyper-complex numbers. And he said, oh, I don't know what you mean by that. And I was like, <laughs> Stephen Wolfram, hey, who has quite a bit of extensive experience just talking with theoretical physicists and, and, and working with software that, that, that crunches through numbers has never heard of this particular number. Well, look, there are, lo there are lots of areas of study that he doesn't know, okay? But still, 
that was like one of the coolest things was he was like unaware of these types of numbers. So I said, well, it's just like a quaternion, which I knew he knew about, right? Except there are absolutely no minus signs. And the reason that that is so important is because that's what's needed for gravity, which is the universal love um, force. It, it loves you no matter how you are, okay? And you've got to kind of set up the accounting system so it's like that. And it was like, you know, nodded, whatever. And I said, well, you know, I am going to give a talk about this at 4 o'clock, and you're, you're, you're more than welcome to come. And I could see a little switch go off, okay? And it was like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to go to his talk, okay? Um, so that I could see him going into a defensive mode. Understand, this is a, an internationally known nerd. He's got money because he's got a, a successful company. Uh, he does invest in, in, in ideas that he believes in. And so does he get pitched by wackos uh, often? Uh, I don't know often, but certainly he... <laughs> He's got to have a defense in there. And when I said, come to my talk, it was like, no, defense up. So I I picked up on that and I just said, well, I'll go to your talk at five. <laughs> so why not come? Oh, no, I didn't follow it up that way. I just said, and I shook his hand and I, I, I went my own way. And what I realized from that interaction is that I can't sell this shirt based on what's on the front. What's on the front is the claims. And so the claim is, it says the standard, the standard, the stand-up physicist, that's me, said, and there's this, this equation, which basically is like uh, the Maxwell equations in the Lorentz gauge, if that sounds at all familiar, without the Lorentz gauge, <laughs> which really rocks if you think about it. Or if you know this stuff and think about it deeply. But anyway, the claim goes on. And there was light, gravity, radiation, and a nucleus, but no stinking haze. The problem with that is that it doesn't have the supporting data, which is on the back. <laughs> okay? Um, I, I can't pitch what's on the back and have eye contact with the person I'm trying to pitch. I mean, it's... A, and you see over here where... It's a, no, no, no. No, no. What you need is something. More. This was actually um, in my talk. Okay, something about uh, let's see. Uh, claims on the front uh, come from the math on the back, and without going into too much detail, see these things in yellow. So that we got well, yellow, green, yellow, 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 yellow. Light. Those parts are all about light. This is. Uh, gauge dependent term uh, a way of getting at light you can actually derive uh, the Maxwell equations by using this as long as you also subtract the gauge in here by doing say a del phi star and minus a, a phi del star sort of thing and if you're good really good you can see that this is basically minus e plus b minus e minus b and so when you crank that through with quaternion algebra you end up with b squared minus c squared in your Lagrange density and that is uh, all you need in order to derive the Maxwell equations. And then I say that it's the hyper complex numbers, these are the numbers with absolutely no minus signs in the house, can be uh, the accounting system required for universal love. Okay, and here again we've got some gauge terms, in fact the exact same gauge terms that, that are in that one, um, but if you do um, to work with these guys, you can connect up to gravity, all right? And um, you see this box thing? You see there's a plus here, a minus sign inside the box. What's the box? No stinking Higgs, <laughs> okay? This has got a gauge term. This has got a gauge term. They're exactly the same size, but one is positive and the other is negative. That's why we don't need the stinking Higgs, okay? And, the, and then there's a strong force, which is kind of two of these things, things all together. Um, so the, of course, the other major fault was that I was, like, walking up to him at a bar camp. <laughs> um, and that's not where really uh, accepted works are, 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 are presented sort of thing. So it was kind of like the whole uh, context was, was, was wrong. 
But one of the biggest kind of bummers out there was that I wasn't able to say, and you know, the math on the back, which I didn't show you because this is ridiculous way to pitch, um, the math on the back um, can get to the math on the front in a Mathematica notebook. <laughs> you wrote the software, or you wrote some of the software, and then uh, hired all kinds of other really bright folks to, to work on it too. Uh, but I've used your software to show this is right. Uh, as a matter of fact, in this notebook, it shows how to derive the Maxwell equations. So you can trust that, 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 that I understand how the machinery works. But that's actually where I have another critique of the Mathematica. And that is, out of the box, sure, it can do it like, like in less time than it takes you to type out uh, the Lagrangian and then applying the Euler Lagrange equations, but the results are but ugly. And I'm using but ugly in a thoroughly technical sense. I mean that a human being looking at it wouldn't get what it was saying like at all. Fortunately, I worked with their um, technical support people to use this notation thing so that it takes the result and it twists it around so that actually it's human understandable, okay? But out of the box, Mathematica <laughs> does a horrid job at uh, trying to uh, represent the, the um, Maxwell derivation, okay? But the big take-home message is I... The reason I have some degree of faith in this is not faith. <laughs> it's that I put it in Mathematica of all programs and, and, and get from the stuff on the back to the stuff on the front. So I gave my pitch. I wasn't able to get to the, the real content of it because uh, uh, I didn't have maybe a mirror or something. <laughs> Whatever. I, I, what I'm going to do in the future, that if I'm going to hang around uh, physicists wearing this shirt, is make sure I have a small printout of of that poster at, at a reasonable size. You know, it's a little little weird to be carrying on around a poster. But if I had it on a relatively small, say, because I could point and I say, here, this is this is U1. Okay. It's a normalized quaternion, which is like three normalized complex numbers. Oh, there is uh, SU2, uh, the unit quaternions, duh, of course I can do it. And I do a little uh, extra trick to, to get to the, the group SU3. I mean, I've got it all there, people. And uh, I, uh, and if you look, page through the notebook, actually, uh, it has some really sophisticated stuff in there. With fringe folks, you don't expect sophisticated stuff. You just uh, expect dribble. But what I've got in there is is something called, oh, what is it? Uh, taking the Christoffel symbol of a metric. And I have to do that in order to get a metric solution to my field equations. I've got that in there. And certainly Stephen Wolfram would know what that was, okay? But... I didn't get him far enough advanced <laughs> into my, my work, and, and he went on, and I know he's lost in, in or struggling around in his own sphere, and I, I wish him the best of luck uh, with uh, Alpha. It's, it's, it's a to totally cool website. But um, that, was, that was the pitch and my explanation of it. Uh, thank you very much.